In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this, which is a brewed up Tiger tank. Now, the root of this video is the fact that I had this Tiger tank sat for absolutely ages, potentially months, maybe even more than a year. Uh, I did actually have it as part of my April painting challenge and ignored it the whole time. And that's how much I was putting it off. And it kept staring at me and staring at me. And so finally I decided that I was going to do something about it. However, my motivation was so low that I didn't want it to be something I had to stress about making it perfect. So I thought, why not make it a brewed up tank? I have one of these already, which I've done and done nicely. And so this will work really well on the gaming table. Should that tank get blown up, I could pull this one out. So let's go and have a look and see how I did it. And hopefully this will inspire you. And maybe you can let me know if it does in the comments below. So here we are, we have the Airfix Tiger Tank, which I started a very long time ago and got to this stage. I've actually just stuck the wheels on just now very quickly. I got to this stage, uh, I, this is the second one of these I've made and I just basically lost uh, a little bit of uh, interest in it, just stuck to one side, I was supposed to do it ages ago. It was actually part of my April challenge. <laughs> when it was still in this state. So I've decided I'm gonna do this as a brewed up tank, as a destroyed tank. So I've taken the, well I always had the um, coupler, whatever, um, the turret uh, as a magnetized turret, but I've decided that what I'm gonna do is I've, I'm going to put this little tea light in, which is a flickering tea light. There we are, flickering tea light. Uh, and I'm going to basically get my Dremel and cut out, so I've marked out around the tea light, I'm going to cut that out so that I can drop the tea light in and, uh, and then be able to take it out, turn it on and off, change the batteries and what have you. And what I'll do is I will have a, uh, the, the turret will be on some um, cotton wool and wire and will be over here and then it will light up and be flickery and then I'll have a look at painting it very quickly. I'd like to get this done relatively quickly. I may or may not put this on a base. I may or may not have the tyres stuck and flapping um, and just have it like this or maybe I'll put it on a base. I'm not sure yet but for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Dremel out and I'm going to cut around that little template there and then make it so that the tea light can go in. I've got a few minutes now, so I'm going to jump on it right away. Against all the odds, it looks like that worked. A little bit of sanding and that will fit in okay. Just a little bit of sanding needed. There we are. How about that? So I might need to continue. If you see, there is actually a step which I've forgotten about. So I might need to continue and shave that around. Uh, I don't, I'm a bit nervous of breaching the in, uh, structural integrity. Um, so I might just leave it like that and have it, but I'm not sure. It's a bit, bit deep. So, but anyway, that's better than I expected it to be. <laughs> um, it worked quite well. So there we are. I just used a drill bit to, uh, to do the shaving. So I might do um, a little bit more as I say, just cut out this bit here um, so that it can fit in a little bit a little bit deeper. I think that's what I might have to do. Um, but I'll come back to do that later because I've run out of time now. Um, but yeah, yeah, this project finally is going to happen. So it's time to get this uh, some primer on this tank now. And what I'm going to be using is German Red Brown Vallejo Primer, which I actually bought for this very purpose. So we'll squirt a couple of drops into a little plastic pot because I'm still fallen out with my uh, airbrush and uh, I'll come in and I'm going to brush stroke that just use a hairy stick method. So I'll get that over the entire model uh, and uh, then when that's done I can start to dress it up. Um, hopefully this won't take me very long. Um, I don't normally, I didn't actually, uh, I did a previous model of this and didn't brush uh, prime it with the with this brown because I didn't have it, I did it in black and it worked out quite well so I'm quite interested in seeing how it works with this brown primer, which I think is a little bit more, a little bit closer to what they actually used on the um, on the real models, on the real thing. So yeah, I'll get this done and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. May do two coats of primer, not sure. Let's see how it looks. And the coating on the tank has gone well, as you can see. And what I'm now about to do is start thinking about painting because I want to finish this quite quickly. So my plan here, let me just uh, adjust the lights very slightly. My plan here is to get the, um, 
get some wire and uh, stick the wire to the top of this um, of, of the uh, candle and bend it in such a way that I can eventually mount the um, the top of the turret like that coming out and have an explosion cloud below it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that roughly. I have my snips, proper snips, not, not my hobby ones. I'm down in the tool room <laughs> at the painting bench. There we are. And I will bend that into a shape, which is how I want it. And then that can get glued into there and then it will eventually get glued onto the bottom of the turret and that will look really nice. So I'm going to get that done. So what I'll do is I will get my bradle and just put a little hole in the top of this here, just like that. And then the metal can sit in there and I have my hot glue gun and I'm simply going to hot glue it in place. Hopefully the hot glue gun is hot now. I've had it go and sat there for a minute. If it isn't, it isn't yet, it's still heating up. It's a slow old one that. So what I'll do is I'll cut some more of the metal to roughly the same lengths. And then hopefully by that point it will be ready. a bit more of a faff than I expected it to be but then hot glue is never my most favorite of um, tools however it does work quite well so that when it's dry will gather these together quite nicely and I will be able to stick that in place probably with more hot glue to be honest and what I'll be doing is I will be building up around that with uh, cotton wool that I will spray but the cotton wool will go on first so I'm gonna let that to go off and I'm going to look at painting the rest of the tank. All right, now I'm going to come to actually painting the tank. Now I have this set from AK Interactive. I know they became a little controversial recently, but I bought this a long time ago. And I'm going to make use of this to paint up this tank. So first of all, we're going to go with the Dunkelgelb initial, which is going to go over the top of the red that I've painted. So I'm just going to put that on my wet palette and paint it over. Uh, and um, you can watch or not but uh, I'll pop some music on um, and uh, get this done. This hopefully will be quite a quick paint job. This is designed to be a blown up tank after all. So let's just uh, pop that all the way over. going to take several coats so I'm going to let that to go off um, and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. It's taken a few coats but we've got there. I'm happy with that now. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to come in with the olive gun and I'm going to put some camouflage on it and I am going to do three colours of camouflage on this so I'm going to have the base and I am going to do the others so I'll get that done. I'll probably not run the camera i will show you what it looks like when it's finished uh, but i did just want to show you that i am happy with that now and uh, yeah it's got a little bit of the red showing through which i don't mind and i'll come along and do something different on the uh, on the wheels i'll probably uh, do a slightly darker color on the wheels so yes i will get that done and i'll bring you along to show you what it looks like when it is finished the next bit is to do the uh, explosion which is going to sit here obviously and pop out the top of the tank so what i've got is i've got some halophil fibers that i pulled out of an old pillow and i'm going to hot glue them to the wire uh, but what i thought i'd quickly do to show you um, it's a bit bright here because i've got all my lights but it really does work very well uh you can't see let me start the whole thing again i won't bother showing that until it's dark go 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 so the next step is to do the explosion which is going to sit coming out the top of the tank. So I've got some halophil fibres here that I've pulled out of an old pillow and I'm just going to um, hot glue them to the wires. So I'll get that done, not on camera because I struggle with hot glue, but yes, um, and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like when that's done. You can see that the uh, first stage of the camouflage has been painted. I'll put another couple of coats on that when it's dry in, in a minute or two. So I just thought I'd get this done while I was waiting. One good thing with 
hot glue as it dries very fast. Um, so that's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray paint this with black and grey and all sorts of other colours. There we are, one explosion marker. So now I'm doing my best to finish this project, the, uh, the brewed up tiger tank. So the first thing that I need to do is get the tracks primed and painted ready for attaching. So I have some track primer from Panzer Races, which I'm going to shake up now. I'm going to paint that on these tracks. These tracks uh, were primed quite a little while ago and they've just sat on this bit of, uh, probably literally for months. <laughs> Um, so um, I just primed it with a, with a grey spray primer. So what we'll do is we'll just get this track primer and paint it on. It should dry quite quickly and then I'll come along and grind them up. Probably grind them up after they've actually been glued onto the model. So um, let's do this quickly. I would really like to get this finished tonight so we're going to rush on with this project. It is a brewed up tank so um, it doesn't need to be perfect, uh, but I do want it to look quite nice. I don't want it to look rubbish, obviously. Um, I do like my modelling. So yeah, so I'll get these painted, and uh, once I'm ready to do the next step, I'll, uh, I'll turn the camera back on. Um, and I'll let you know if there's anything I do that I don't film, that probably I'll film it all. Because, hey, I like sharing this stuff with you. Right then. Transfers. So these came with the kit and I am going to make use of them. I'm doing the Normandy 1944 obviously rather than the North Africa. As you can see I've put the uh, Normandy camouflage style on. And so that's going to be these red ones here I believe and these two rather than this. Now I don't have the instructions anymore so I might get this wrong but if I do then I do. So I'm going to do just one or two of these on camera and then do most of them off because it is rep repetitive. But first of all what you do is you take a very sharp knife and you cut out the transfers that you want from the sheet. You don't dunk the whole sheet because you may not want to put all the transfers on at once. So it's quite important to remember to separate the ones that you're interested in before you put them in the water. And that is the step after this one. Pop them in some warm water and just make sure they actually dunk. Okay, there we are. So that can then set there. The next thing is I actually have micro set and micro sol, and I would so highly recommend that you get yourself some of this if you don't have it. And if you're not confident of putting on um, transfers, then this will really revolutionize your life because yeah, it makes it so much easier. So the first thing that you do with this, very, very carefully, I don't have a, actually, you know what, that'll probably be better than nothing, so I don't knock it over, there we are, is you get yourself a brush, if I can find one, just one second. Okay, so you get yourself your brush, and you very carefully brush that on where you're gonna put the transfer. Now this first transfer is just gonna go on the side here. So you brush on your micro set first. Okay, and when you've got your micro set on, then you lift your transfer, which should now, there it is, should now have separated, which it has, and you pick it up very carefully with your tweezers, better than I'm doing here. There we are. So you get that with your tweezers. And then what you do is you very carefully transfer that over to the surface. Now because you've got the micro set on there, it's a little easier than if you didn't have it, trust me. So you just transfer that over, <laughs> that's why they call it a transfer, and drop it in place. And now you can move that a little bit if you wish, you can slide it around and get it lined up. So now that's in place, I'm relatively happy with the way that is. What you then do is you brush the micro sole on to the decal. Um, and, then that, and then that means that, you, that it will then set. So um, we'll get a second brush under here, and we'll not mix them. And we put the micro sole on over the top of the micro set. Which is, sounds a bit backwards, doesn't it? You'd have thought that the set would be what you put on afterwards. But no, it's not. It's what you put on you put the micro set on first and then 
the micro is solid. So once you're happy, just be very careful at this stage because you don't want to move it. And this then will stop the transfer from what they call in these sorts of things from silvering. Um, and yeah, and if you're trying to go over an uneven surface, then micro set, I'll keep applying that to smooth it over and over. And that's that, simple as that. So I'm gonna do that for the rest of these transfers and I'll bring you along to show what it looks like when it's done. We're very, very nearly done on this build now, which is really, really cool. Next step is to glue the turret to the flame cloud or the smoke cloud. And I'm gonna do that quite simply by going inside with the hot glue gun in here. If I can get that in shot, there we are. Put a load of hot glue in, if it would work. There we are. This really is a cheap old hot glue gun. I'm gonna to need to get a new one, I think. So I'll just put a load of hot glue in and then stick it to the foam. Like that. There we are. That'll do. Cool. All right, so I'll let that dry. Um, and then the final thing is to put the tracks on and then we're done. Fortunately, these tank tracks are quite simple. And I've said it now, so now I'll screw it up and make it look really, really hard. But basically what you do is you've pushed them in around the wheels, as you can see I've done there. You put some super glue on one of the ends, which is just out of shot at the moment, apologies. It's just some super glue there. Then you wrap that round, and because I don't really, it's probably gonna sit on a base of this anyway, you wrap it round and then join it together like that. And then if you've got some super glue activator, now is a good time to use it. But mine is upstairs because I'm stupid. So now I'll hold that <laughs> and hope that it goes off. And that's as simple as it is. So I'm gonna do that for both of those uh, tracks, uh, both sides, and then this build is pretty much done. I may end up giving up and going up and getting some super glue activator and doing that again. But it's basically what you see there. So yeah, I think we're done. And um, here we have it in the dark, glowing away. It's the best way that I can get uh, to film it, as it's not very visible with the lights on. But you can see just how effective that uh, little LED is. Um, and if I now go and turn the lights on, there you are. You can still see the flickering, but not all that well, but I'm very, very pleased with how that's turned out. That's gonna look absolutely brilliant on the table. I have a, another Tiger, which is painted very similarly, but not blown up. So this will be used for chain of command, but it could be used for bolt action or anything else. Um, and uh, I will bring both to the table, and then if my other Tiger gets killed, then I can put this on the table and it'll act as a, as a marker, which is, which is pretty awesome. And that's worked out pretty much how I imagined it. So yeah, there we are. We have a brewed up Tiger tank. Well, there you are. That was a quick end to a project which had sat on my desk for more months, maybe even a year or two, and far longer than I would like to admit. But I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I wasn't initially going to make a brewed up tank. I have been thinking about doing one for a very long time, which is why I had those LEDs in the first place. Uh, but I just never got around to it and uh, I've got that off my backlog now so it's no longer staring at me every time I look at my in progress and now when I get around to playing Chain of Command I have a brewed up Tiger Tank which could be used on the battlefield. So there we are, I hope you've enjoyed that, I hope you've learned something maybe. If you've done something similar, I'd love to hear. Please do pop that in the comments below, I always love to hear from your guys um, and uh, any input, any suggestions are, is very gratefully received. So I'll close off by saying thank you so much for watching and please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.